it be nice if it were this easy to add touches of color to your home or garden? Hi, I'm Alan Smith. No doubt, color is one of the most exciting elements of design. It can transform the way something looks and feels, in that color creates moods. So now it's just a matter of me placing this one in among the ones that I've already planted. I can't wait to see how they flourish over the course of the growing oh, season. It'd be amazing how quick they grow. So I use this long handled trowel to get the first group up. And you can see the bulbs kind of fall apart nicely, like this. And I take the soil knife, and if I want to cut around and dig some more up, it makes it really easy, like that. Hi, I'm Alan Smith, welcome to the show. Did you know that an estimated 65% of American households have some type of pet or another? So let me bring that into perspective. That accounts for about 80 million families that have either dogs, cats, birds, <laughs> hamsters, reptiles, a horse, or any combination thereof. That's a lot of pets. And it's safe to say that pets are quite popular. So popular, in fact, that pet expenditures like food and toys and vet care are part of a $60 billion industry. So today, I thought we'd explore some projects and places that enrich the lives of both of the pets and their owners. And to get us started, we're gonna head to a cafe that is perfect for cat lovers. It's called a cat cafe and a cat fay. I chose cat fay, but you'll see both versions. So uh, there are kind of several different versions of them. In Asia, uh, my understanding is that a lot of them aren't up for adoption, but when they, the concept moved over to the US, we started partnering with local shelters, so all the guys are up for adoption. All of our cats are fully vetted. They've had all their uh, shots, their feline leukemia FIV negative, and they're ready to go home. Um, people come in, they drink coffee, they play games, they socialize with them, they adopt them, and they just hang out. People who know about, more about science than I do have proven that uh, there's something about the vibrations of, of purring that can relax people. So, and it seems obvious to me as somebody who loves cats that that works, so. I think everybody who comes in, if they could adopt one, would leave with one. But most of the time we get students who can't be with their cats, we get people who have somebody allergic in the family, someone with too many animals already, but somebody, nobody leaves not having fallen in love with one of these guys. So we're basically like a giant foster home. We work with uh, Springdale and Fayetteville shelters to bring these guys in. We help give them space, give them time to work with the, maybe the cats who need a little more work. Um, we bring them in here, we make it as comfortable for them as possible. They're, at this point, they're not here that long. They get adopted out pretty quickly. So we try to make a lot of spaces where all the cats are comfortable. They love being back here on the mats, and the more you're on the ground, the more they like to come up and cuddle. Uh, we have quiet areas for when they want to nap. We have fun areas with the toys. They're pretty much in everything all the time. So you, there's not really many places you can go where you can't find a cat around here. I am a cat owner. I don't think you do this without owning a few more than you mean to. Um, I have always loved cats. I love all animals. Um, the more I'm around cats, the more you start to understand them. They never do what you want them to do. They're always doing something silly. Um, I love how unpredictable they are. It keeps it really fun in here. We have all kinds of personalities in here, and when I started, I didn't believe that uh, cats acted like you know their color or their type, and they really do. We've got our Maine Coons act like Maine Coons. We've got our sassy calicos. We've got our torties with our, their tortitude. Black cats are super relaxed in general, so we've got a little bit of everybody, some party cats and some shire cats we're working with. So this is our cat cave. This is the place they come when they need a little peace and quiet. 
Bo here is a pretty shy guy. He likes to do this most of the day. Barney down here, and then Skylar and our old lady Sammy. So we, you can usually find them relaxing in here. So we have about 12 right now. We're in a bigger space, so we're not sure how many more we're gonna get, but with kitten season coming up, we're gonna be pretty full of kittens. We don't do super itty bitty kittens. They have to be fixed, but they're pretty young. Um, we call the shelters and say, who do you have for us every week? And they come and they go, and it's just kind of a constant stream at this point of figuring out who's gonna work well in here and uh, watching them get adopted pretty fast at this point. Adoption's a lifetime thing, so we don't push anybody to do it. If they just wanna come hang, hang out, that's great. We don't do the hard sell. When we adopt a cat, it's for life. Um, if you move, you take them with you. They're pretty easy to get along with. But the thing about being at Purr is we get to know these guys really well. So we can really uh, counsel people on which ones would be great for them, whether they have kids or dogs or uh, whatever their circumstances are. We've got a cat who would be happy in whatever situation they've got going on. It's, when people come in, we really see that the cats tend to pick people. I have had, we had June in here, and June was kind of a pill, but I loved her, and she loved me, and she loved every few people. And then she would come out, and she just picked her human, and she's been a love bug since, and I can't even believe the pictures I see of all her being super affectionate. So when people come in, you see the cats kind of go from one person to the next. Some, some cats love everybody, some cats really decide who they wanna go home with. Uh, my tip for people looking for a pet is to take your time. They're all cute, but they're all very different personalities. So you're gonna wanna pick the one that, you know, if you're at work all day, they're fine sleeping. If you have kids, they wanna play. There's just not any kind of cat we can't find for somebody. It's just about picking the right one. You don't have to be a crazy cat person to know that our feline friends love cat mint. If you choose the right variety, it can pull double duty in beautifying your garden and bringing all the kitties into your yard. You know, there are two things that just send me over the top when it comes to my garden. One is fragrance. I love any sort of fragrant flower or foliage. And the other is sort of anything in the blue to purple tones. And that's what you're seeing here. Of course, I adore lavender. Who doesn't love lavender in the garden? But for me, it can be a little tricky. It can be fussy. I have heavy clay soils. About the best I can do in lavender is to grow it in a container, which isn't so bad. But an alternative plant is cat mint. Just look at this. I wish you could smell it. It's just fantastic. And look at the flower power. This particular cat mint is called Cat's Meow. And I love it because it's not as difficult for me to grow. It actually will do okay in my soils. And it's a perennial. It comes back regularly, reliably, year after year, and blooms aplenty, as you can see. Whereas for the lavender, I need for it to grow in a, in a sandier soil, a soil that drains much more sharply or quickly for it to survive. And sometimes it doesn't come through the winter. So if you're looking for an alternative in your garden to bring you that, that lavender looking experience and a marvelous fragrance, give a cat mint like Cat's Meow a try. One way to unwind after a long day is to spend some time with your dog. You know, at the Bark Bar, you don't have to leave your dog at home. You can bring your best friend along. And the menu here, well, there's something for everybody and everybody's taste. The idea of Bark Bar actually came about about five years ago. We wanted to be able to create places that people could gather and sit 
um, watch their dog and, and mix and mingle. We want people, uh, whether or not they have a dog, to come and hang out at Bark Bark Shoot. We'll even let cat lovers in. Um, you know, this is a place for community, for everybody to come together. We also were uh, fortunate enough to be able to put into place a couple of positions that their focus was strictly about the dogs. And that is where our bark rangers come in. As a bark ranger, the training we go through, we have a vet that came in from Maumel, I believe, um, and we went through different signs of aggression that dogs show, you know, you know, different things like getting rigid or when their hackles go up, and, and we went through big dog versus small dog, CPR. I kind of do damage control, kind of like a, a doggy bouncer, doggy lifeguard. Most of what I do is preventative um, because you can see it when dogs get rigid, you know, dogs have really short attention spans. So, you know, I just play with them and move them away from a potential, you know, encounter that wouldn't be, you know, super positive. Um, anytime that someone comes to Bark Bar, we ask that they stop at front check-in first. If you don't have a dog, we're just gonna check your ID and then you can go on in and love on everybody else's dogs. If you do have a dog uh, and it's your very first time visiting, uh, we ask that you stop and we will go through a quick little five minute explanation of, of uh, Bark Bar as well as our expectations of you as a guest. Um, this is where we also take care of the shot records. We wanna make sure that uh, anyone that is accompanying their dog to Bark Bar has records for Parvo, Bordetella, and Rabies. Um, but the beauty is they have to bring the records once and we enter them in our system so that the second time that they come back, all they have to do is give us their name, we can look them up, and then they can walk right on in. Um, our menu at Bark Bar consists of, what else? Gourmet hot dogs. Uh, we have about seven hot dogs as well as some nibble options. We also have a canine cuisine menu. I think what sets Bark Bar apart right now is, aside from the obvious, being able to have your dogs with you, being able to have them inside, um, I think it's the community that we've created. I, 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 I tend to go back to that a lot, but that's what's happened. The folks that um, are, are coming in, they, they're coming because they love their dog, but they're also coming because they love the atmosphere. Good boy, stay. There you go, Max. Bone appetit. Well, dogs just love these biscuits, dog treats. And you know what's great about them is that they're all natural, they're homemade, it's a wide range of flavors, and they're created by chefs with learning disabilities. The purpose behind biscuits is to help those with special needs gain competitive employment while making delicious treats for your best friend. ICM exists to, to empower people with disabilities, intellectual and developmental disabilities, to be able to live as independently as possible. ICM is a nonprofit. We started uh, back in 1988 with an office in Little Rock, and now we have offices all over the state in Fayetteville, Fort Smith, Prescott, Monticello, and right here in Little Rock. And Bravo is an extension of that. Um, we created Bravo, stands for Bridging Recreational and Vocational Opportunities. We created that so that we could try to start developing job opportunities, develop you know, an avenue in which people can develop skills, knowledge, and abilities to be able to um, be successful in the workforce. So with that, we created three different stores, um, brushes, bamboo, and biscuits. <music> and it's also a bakery. On the bakery side, that's where our clients who attend Bravo, they bake all of the treats that we sell in our store at Biscuits. 
Clients, when they are participating in a baking class at Biscuits, they are working on the skills needed to be safe in a kitchen. Um, they are learning how to preheat the ovens, to set the temperature, they're learning to read recipes, to measure the ingredients, working as a team. So it enhances social skills, kitchen safety, fine motor skills. So there's tons of things that they're working on while doing an activity that they enjoy. I like to dough, I like to put my hands in dough and mess it up with I like to get dirty and all that. Biscuits is just one of our stores that we have here at our Little Rock location. We also have Bamboo, which is our home decor and gift store, and we have Brushes, which is our um, art store and gallery. And in Brushes, what's really cool is um, our clients actually create all of the art that is sold in Brushes. Once a piece of their sells, that client gets 80% uh, of the profit. People with intellectual and developmental disabilities in Arkansas are the people that we support. That's what our mission surrounds. Um, so anybody that may have an intellectual disability, they may have um, cerebral palsy, um, all different types of disabilities, people who need additional supports to be able to thrive and live independently. That's who we serve. You know, it's pretty amazing. A lot of our customers come in, they lack self-confidence, they lack certain skills and knowledge that a lot of people without disabilities may take for granted. And we see a dramatic change as people come in, they start interacting with the public, they're learning new skills that they have not learned before. There's this growth that takes place that is absolutely amazing. Um, so it's pretty incredible. Mr. Duncan, what are you doing up there? You need to get off the sofa. He certainly is a cute little rascal. Pets we regard as members of the family, and why not? But you know they don't necessarily have to have run of the entire house. If there are certain areas or furniture that you would prefer to keep your furry friends away from, I have a few tips you may want to consider. First and foremost, you want to make sure that your pets have a designated space that provides a comfortable alternative to the area you're trying to keep them away from, like a pet bed or a specific piece of furniture. Use treats to encourage your pet to use that area. You can also make those areas they prefer a lot less desirable. Harmless but effective things like double-sided tape or aluminum foil deter pets from furniture and countertops by creating an uncomfortable sensation when walked on. If those solutions don't work, consider blocking access by placing large items in the way of the area. Alternatively, you can buy or make your own deterrent device. These usually work by making a loud noise that startles the animal when they're in places they shouldn't be. For those of us who are naturally inclined, you can mix your own keep away spray by using citrus or bitter apple scented oils. Cats and dogs alike are not fond of the smell. If all else fails, you can crate or confine your pet at night or when you are home to prevent them from getting into mischief. The key to keeping your house in order and your pets happy is balance. If your pets are engaging in problematic behavior, and even the best ones will from time to time, right Duncan? then make sure that they're getting enough stimulation and are in good health. And always consult with a vet if you have questions or concerns about the well-being of your pet. Okay, Duncan, let's go outside. Good boy. If you're looking for a natural canine treat to help with the training of your dog, here's a great recipe that you can make yourself. I'm sure it'll be a hit with your pooch.
A healthy flock starts with good nutrition. If you know me, you know I'm crazy about chickens. I mean, after all, look at the size of this chicken house I built. So for me, caring for my chickens is very important. Apart from having clean water, quality feed that supplies necessary nutrients is one of the most important parts of keeping your flock healthy and happy. On my last visit to the big Ohio National Poultry Show, I got a chance to talk to Sherry McCullough. She's a poultry exhibitor that shares my love for raising healthy chickens, and she just happens to be a silky lover too. I raise bearded black and white silkies and black cochins. When I was a kid, we had a farm, and so I was raised with chickens, but we had chickens for a different purpose. We raised them for eggs and meat, and we raised white leghorns, so um, my parents would get a straight run of um, chicks, and then we would grow them up and eat the roosters and keep the hens for, for layers. As I got older and was and got married, I really wanted to have my own farm. So that's the first animals that we put on our farm, farm animals were, were chickens. And it started out just with pretty chickens. And then I found silkies on the internet. And I was just like, I was totally in love because they were so different than any other chicken that I had ever seen and never heard of them before. So. I contacted a breeder in California and I had her ship me over uh, four pairs of white silkies. So I've been raising them for 14 years. When I start hatching out my chicks, I think nutrition is a huge part of just the beginning. Keeping their conditions clean, making sure they have clean water, making sure they have good food. And it just kind of continues and you build on that. You really got to start it out when they're, when they're really young, when they're babies. I plan on being around for a long time. <laughs> a long time. <laughs> right, girl? Well, I hope you've enjoyed the show as much as I have. Unfortunately, we've run out of time. I hope you found a few ways to help make your home a little more pet friendly. I know these guys will find their way of thanking you in their own special way. Until next time, I'm Alan Smith, along with Duncan and Chatty. Oh, yes, you're such a pretty girl. Here we go. Okay, here we go. Ready? Okay. Hey guys, sit. Whoops. <laughs> okay, boys, sit. Good boy. <laughs> it broke. Come here. Come. Okay. Ready? Okay. All right. Sit, Milo. Sit. 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 Not gonna sit. Oh, Max, you're such a good boy.